looking to play probably blink stalkers pretty commonly but he's, he's a player who's also comfortable with phoenix gotcha well to see what's going to happen we have to introduce our players and in the bottom left for r8 in the red playing a banger of a game two against beyond it's kelliser and in the bottom right spawning down for team liquid in the blue it is skillis did that so out of order that's close enough a steadfast you know as we talk about this and what we want to see and what this might mean from fourth place all the way to sixth place i'm just sitting here and i'm gonna put a little bit of bias into this is that i want kelizer to take a map in this tournament in the group stage i know he's got two series left so it's somewhat likely but after and it, the incredible game he played against beyond is the last game we had feels like he's kind of due you know uh, it certainly does uh that was that was a heartbreaking game number two uh because he was he had played really well to get himself back into an uncomfortable game and it was an extremely chaotic game in which he he really did a good job of keeping the integrity of his army pretty solid while being able to fight back and punch back tvt can get really chaotic in those situations and he he answered it quite well uh but yeah i think you you said it best at the very end he just didn't have any scans available and it really hampered his ability to well be able to feel confident moving around the map and it was ultimately running into a bunch of units that ended up being a uh disaster and and ending his ending his tournament run and ending that series but i think in this series this is probably the best opportunity for him to take a map yeah i think it makes sense skillis again he's been talking about how he's not been super happy with the quality of his play but also this is tvp this is a matchup that some people would say is, is maybe a little bit terror in favorite i think I'll, I'll be one of those people but also this is a matchup where you can do some interesting things like opening up a double reaper on your reactors to try to get a couple probes early or if you're skillis dropping a proxy pile on the left side and by the way this proxy pylon, it's in a weird spot for anything. There's a twilight on the way. Steadfast, how do you feel about some invisible men? Ah, uh, this looks very much to me like we could see some Zest DTs, which is to say building the gateway and the dark shrine in that location. Uh, Skillis, of course, did scout his opponent's quick reactor. So he is going to be able to see like, okay, yeah, you, you're probably going to go for this double Reaper very quickly. Uh, we will not see a scout coming on in. Oh, attempt to wall is not going to be successful. Gillis, unfortunately, not able to get that third adept on top of that Hellion right away. Hellion will find some value. Gillis did start up resonating glaives to sell what is going on. That's a very cute move from Gillis. And he should be able to get the kill on this adept. Yeah, or sorry, pardon, on, on this last Reaper that's nifty that is very nifty out of skillis it will in fact be this zest dt setup with that proxy gate on top of this and skillis has done a pretty solid job of selling this to his opponent he does start up blink in earnest as he can afford it but he does want to find some good value with this kelizer is building a tech lab but if he starts building siege tanks and does not go for a very quick uh pardon me a very quick <clears throat> Uh, Raven, he could very well find himself just dead, especially if he drops some mules too. Uh, we will see these adepts getting a couple of SCVs in the natural, but they are going to get corralled and picked off. Widow Mind Drop has been spotted by Skillis, and he should have units in position. But of course, he wants to be warping in DTs. Ah, uh, okay, he warps in two stalkers. Well, one more stalker at home. We're not seeing a warp in of DTs yet. Gillis will have to pull the probes. Kelizer getting two and uh, no actual real retarget re fire on those uh, mines to try and deny more mining time. D did I miss? Okay, he just warped in the first TT. Yeah, I, I did not miss anything. Uh, I mean, there's still no Raven. And this could still be very bad for Kelizer if he doesn't get energy. So there's a fun another way to take a look at this is probes. <laughs> the Widow Mines aren't ready, Kelizer. I mean, that's a little annoying, but... The other way to look at this is that the warping of the stalkers here hides the DTs even more, right? Because yes. if there are no stalkers in the main base, Kellis is like, wait a minute, what's happening? What is, uh, there's something weird. So 
having the stalkers a they're really important defensively but they also mean that Kelzer is not going to have quite as much information about what's happening he's going to see of course the twilight's researching he's going to see that there are stalkers but there is 50 energy in the natural there's 50 energy in the main i'm pretty sure i saw that first scan gets dropped Kelzer's taking no damage oh, from this whatsoever at least one of the dark templar gets out but in the balance of things it's 540 and the dts are on second scan is going to kill the second dt it's 540 and the DTs. Oh, uh, Kelizer, did you just kill your tank? Oh. Oh, he did. Oh, he did. That's not ideal. Oh. After such a good start, too, I still think he's in a really great position. The army supply is ridiculous, but imagine this push with two tanks instead of one. Skillis, by the way, moving into a good position to spot this, but unfortunately, just a little bit out of position. We'll blink away with those stalkers, but this does look very scary. Uh, now, moving out when DTs are on the map is tricky. Oh, we're going to see a mind drop on top of these stalkers. They've already blinked. Good target fire from Skillis. Does manage to take one of them out. Kelizer targeting the units, ignoring the shield battery overcharge for a moment, but it eventually will take that down. There is a DT on the back line. Could get that siege tank, but there is... Well, there's actually not that much bio, and he does get the kill on the tank. Skillis, eh, despite a very uncomfortable start, may just very well clean this up. That was almost such a cool sequence from Kellos. I mean, it's still, he got something, got shield batteries and stalkers and killed off a couple workers, but carpet bombing the widow mines on top of the stalkers, the goal, if you get damage, that's great, but your, your goal there is to force the stalkers to blink, at which point you can target them down because they can't run away. And that's really, really nice. So if he was able to accomplish that, and if he was able to run across the map with say two tanks instead of one, well, that would have been, again, I think this goes very differently. That being said, Liberator in the main base is going to deny mining for a time and well, now the game goes on. Skillis has these DTs whenever his opponent moves out. Yeah, there are missile turrets, but you can still, if there's no army there, missile turrets don't really matter. Skillis has charge on the way. He's got his Robo Bay done, but steadfast, I guess, because of the pressure, because of the, the lost stalkers and maybe some other things. He's a little slow on the Colossus, and first one's going to get started right now. Still no uh, extended thermal lance, by the way. But in the balance of things, Kelizer had the opportunity to do some cool stuff, but didn't really get all that substantive damage done so now it's it's a two base terror and third base done right around right now against the skillis whose economy is just about where he wants it to be yeah uh and <laughs> that killing that one siege tank really took a ton of power out of that push we're gonna see kelizer he will scout this gateway this dark shrine and this uh pylon and that's that's a really nice freebie little pick off oh kelizer okay i was gonna say he's gotta actually kill it though uh very nice very nice getting the kill. You mentioned before, by the way, the a very important concept, and that is the warping in stalkers to try and mask the build. But two stalkers was not enough to have at that point. Not anywhere close to enough to have it. At minimum, you should have four or five, probably five. So Kelizer did sniff that out, and I think that's why he was saving uh, orbital command energy. So I do wonder what would have happened if Skillis had instead just gone right in with the DTs, because I don't think Kelzer had energy at that point. Maybe he would have gotten something else done. We're obviously way past that stage at this point, but I think that is worth worth considering is, yes, it, it masks it, but Kelzer was able to sniff it out anyways, it seems like. That he was, but look at what we're seeing out of Kelzer right now on top of interesting developments. He's on single eBay, all right? This is not anything more than that, but he's adding in the armory very quickly. He's going to rely pretty significantly on his Widow Mines moving forward, which, hey, generally, Widow Mines against Zealots and things are really nice, forcing observers that you can snipe and adding a little bit more power to your Widow Mine drops later on if you decide to do that are always really nice. But Widow Mines do lose some of their power once Colossus are out. They outrange them. The Widow Mines are making it a little harder to engage, certainly, but Ooh. the Colossus can kill them down quad drop from Kelizer on the right side though there are four or five actually, there are five stalkers here so i don't think he really shouldn't try this more stalkers are on the way this does not seem viable but Kelizer is the very least he's you know keeping some of the army back there and maybe he can find something later on the majority of his army is getting ready to shove into the third base i think he's trying to force the army mm -hmm. to stay in the main base and then he might be looking for a huge doom drop from the bottom on top of the Colossus of Kelizer. He, he, I think he's trying to force an army split and go for a big attack, but there was a bit rebuild pylon here from Skillis. Skillis is going to be able to reposition the other Colossus. Very heads up play from both players. Cool maneuver from Kelizer and cool answer to it. 
We are going to see some good kiting with the Colossus, able to pick off a few bio units. Zealot run by on the top side, will get deflected. It was initially just the one Zealot. Skill is kind of uh, checking with that and being like, okay, when you move out, I'll, I'll send in the other ones. There's that Doom Drop coming in for realsies now. The empty medevac leading the charge. Battery overcharge will get popped, but there are so many bio units here, and that is going to be a lot of stuff going down for Skillis, but he did enough damage to the army to make this more than okay for himself. Kelizer does have more units rallying across the map, but most of the medevacs were targeted down. Very good job from Skillis. And Kelizer, that next wave was not ready to hit just yet. And now we've got a Stargate completed and a Phoenix being built. Skillis is going to go hunting for this last drop, and I, I think he's going to get it. You know, Steph, I got a question that target fire on that as well. Like, there was there were three Colossus. They were not really in the best situation. That was the Dead Forge. Skillis could have been, you know, a plus one's great, but plus two is much better. He was like 80% done. And that could have given, that could have been canceled. There was maybe an opportunity to try to dive on top of the Colossus, but oh, shield batteries make it. it hard. Getting the plus two by itself, though, on this drop that is doomed to die anyways, would have been really nice. And the fact that Kellisher just, for whatever reason, opted not to commit to it when he did have the time, maybe... Uh, maybe is a bit of a mistake. And now we're seeing Skillis on the map. He's got Archons. He's got plus two done, plus one armor on the way, adding in additional attacks. He takes his fifth base. But this army that he has right now with a couple of Colossus, Blink Stalkers, heavy upgrades, Archons against three ghosts or, or something, but it's not a heavy ghost counter right now. Skillis, this army, if he can fight the right angle, this is a, it, this is a game ending army. It certainly can be. Uh, there's six Vikings, which is good, but not a crazy amount. There is going to be a Widowmine drop on the other side of the map. And Kelizer looks like he might have F2'd that, wasn't able to get that done. Wasn't able to get those Mines Burrow. There were uh, probe pulls and all that. We are going to see big Archon blasts on the Vikings. Vikings getting a little bit too far forward, a little bit too saucy. And now with only a few Vikings remaining and still four Colossus on the field, Kelizer is in some huge trouble. Not enough EMPs to burn through those Archons super quickly. Has cleared them out now, but I think Skillis is just going to crush this with the army. The War Prism behind this is still alive. Kelizer is just going to get absolutely overrun. Oh, uh -oh. and the lift up into a dead medevac. Very nice play from Skillis, waiting for that to get loaded up. And Skillis is almost certainly going to take the game right here and now. Yeah, I, I think he has taken the game right now. There we go. Kelizer is going to tap out. I, the drop was an interesting idea, Steadfast, but... Put it, bombing five drops in or six medevacs, five full past uh, past a bunch of stalkers is not necessarily a cost-effective way to play the game. Is uh, probably the way we're going to talk about that. He lost so much and trading for a couple stalkers, maybe if he gets plus two, but even then it's probably not going to be worth doing. So that means that Kelizer falls down in his attempt in his search to get his first map win in this tournament. Uh, we have another game and we have another series for Kelizer coming up tomorrow, but... Still, still winless. Still winless. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, he is indeed still winless. Uh, but he's he's put some decent results forward. Kel Skillis, though, mm -hmm. really want to give props to him. Fantastic map vision throughout that. Uh, dealt with the Widowmine drops very quickly. Precisely managed that game about as well as one could ask. And uh, he he will find himself saving off technically being eliminated in this group just yet yeah but i mean what would even need to happen who he plays who does skill yeah, play I, 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 yeah i know i know i know <laughs> <laughs> i'm not saying it's gonna happen i'm just well, you know he's, he's staving it off for the moment it is a good I, job I mean, look he could beat astrea and uh, beyond could lose or uh, and firefly could lose to kelizer and beyond could lose to Cyril, and they're all two zeros and I think stuff has to happen. Unironically, there is actually a not super unrealistic road for him to make it through. Astrea has to play Serral, and then Skillis plays Astrea tomorrow. Actually, hang on. No, th <laughs> this is far from over, actually. Uh, if Skillis 2 0s here and Firefly loses to Bion. Skillis actually does control his destiny. Okay, I was thinking this was like a ridiculous premise but no he's got a very decent shot wait or did skillis already skillis didn't lose to astrea already did he oh, no he no plays, no they play on the last day tomorrow yeah 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 so if skillis were to 2-0 astrea he could find himself in the playoffs despite starting off 0-3 
assuming Australia loses to to Cyril, which is uh, I, I mean, I have huge hopes for Australia. He's he's a dark horse pick for mine to win the tournament, like really, really dark horse. But like he's he's the Protoss hope for me um, at this stage. Although Hero looks really good, so I I might have to attend that. But I don't know. Huh. I mean, he'd go at like max he can do is two. Yeah, I guess, I guess if Australia gets zero twoed and skill is two zeros, the next next two series, it seems. Well, okay. you say the next two series, he just needs to win this yeah. map, and then it's down to tomorrow. Like, I, I, I was, like, thinking, like, ah, like, it's, it's uh, voodoo math, like, but it's actually not a ridiculous premise, which you think about a player going 1-6-0-3 and still having a chance to make it through at this stage in the tournament, it's, I, I, yeah, I don't know. That's pretty awesome for skillless, potentially. Skillis has the good luck of being in a being in a group with a player who we don't expect to see drop a single map, which is how this happens. Which is <laughs> when you have a dominant player like this, that's when we can get into these. Well, they're all kind of two and three, so I, yeah, one of them will advance. That's kind of that, that's what tends to happen. On the flip side, when you have a very even group, you can have players that are do, that go three and two. When there's kind of a punching bag at the bottom, uh, you can have three and two players fail to advance, like a special last year. So it's gonna be fun tracking that one. It's steadfast. We are ready for our second game of this series to determine whether Skillis still wants to give himself an opportunity, whether Kelizer is going to get his first map at a cat of eats. So all these questions will be answered in just about 10 minutes or so. Game two. In the upper left, he's up one for Team Liquid. It's Skillis. And his opponent spawning down on the bottom right for R8, looking to still secure his first map in this tournament. It is Kelizer. Steadfast, going back to game one, if we look at that first push that Kelizer went on after he had defended, deflected the DTs, if he has a second tank, I think he has He maybe a, just wins the game. Yeah, I think he has a very realistic chance to just win the game right there. It, the bio wasn't an insane number, but doubling tank DPS. two tanks yeah there's so much power with that like against a player that committed to those dts the way skillis did uh the scan would have been in time to save the second tank not to mention the fact that the dps was just obviously going to be higher before the first tank was sniped which would have been the second tank uh yeah that that self kill on the tank from kelizer that that really hurts especially after the loss he suffered to be on in game number two because you, you got to be wondering like oh man like what am i doing to myself i just can't catch a break uh skillis by the way great job with this probe scouts sees the reactor yeah doesn't necessarily know it's marine first but the reaper would be killing your probe at that point so you can be pretty sure it's a marine first and actually based on the time no never mind based on the timing yeah you know it's a, a reactor because otherwise the reaper would have popped out later and the reactor would start later it's so a really nice uh, micro on the probe. Skillis, he's... It's so funny because I, I looked at the O3 and I, I don't want to harp on it too much, but I was really thinking in my head that he was already eliminated from this group, but that is just simply not the case. Yeah. Uh, by the way, this probe, simply by being here, threatening a pylon build, will delay the swap onto that uh, reactor for about five, six seconds. That's pretty significant when your opponent's opening uh, reactor cyclone. Yeah, and it's Reactor Cyclone on Oceanborn, which is, I, I feel like whenever I see this build really work, uh, as a t committed timing, not as a response to something, it kind of, it's on Oceanborn. The, oh. the, the, that high ground, that flat high ground, is this Marine will get sniped here by the Adept. Very nice skill list. But that wide open natural that's just totally flat, there's no ramp to it. And, and the relatively quick rush distance as well on Oceanborn means that the quad cyclone pressure, or, ooh, double cyclone into double Hellion. Yeah, uh, maybe hoping that Skillis, uh, in order to deal with the double cyclone or the anticipation of the double cyclone, does not wall the front and is then like, okay, I can, you know, uh, kind of skirmish with the first units, maybe draw them out of position with the cyclones and then run by with the Hellions. But Skillis, look at this, this is a great little wall. He's got firm, tight control of these units. Uh, he is a player who really does have great unit control. And yeah, this is. Is a nice start, gets a fair bit of damage on these and is well set up to block the Hellions from running by. And we gotta talk we have to talk about what Killers is doing behind this because the first two Cyclones are trying to find something, they're not gonna get it. 
That is a second and third barracks before any starport. Kelliser is going to be extremely committed to the next push. Probably going to get the starport, right, for the medevacs and for everything else. But he wants to make sure that he can hit this timing with Cyclones, with Hellions, with whatever he has, with the Marines, and likely Stim going down on top of that. Right? Give give us like a minute and a half, right? Give us a minute and 40 seconds, and Kelliser's going to be looking to run onto the other side of the map with just a ton of stuff. And punish Skillis well for existing, I guess. Yeah. But because the uh, first part of this didn't really work out, everything else is a little bit more suspect, I guess. I wouldn't say suspect because, you know, like the, the whole point of the build is there's always multiple levels to it. And you're always like, okay, even if X doesn't work, Y can still do pretty well. Uh, but there is, there is certainly it's going to be easier for Skillis to defend the next wave, having had such a clean start already. Uh, probe gonna try and get sniped here. Blink does get revealed, but I think Kelizer probably could have inferred it by now already. Uh, it is always a question. There, you you sometimes do go for the starport, but sometimes you don't go for this at all, and you'll pull like six SCVs and go for a big bunker wall at your opponent's third, and just try and smash through with a really slow but very powerful uh, you know, siege tank, bio push, and, and just a really sturdy setup. But yeah. for now, uh, we haven't seen whether Kelizer is going to go for that yet. He did get a little bit supply blocked at 70. Not too bad, though. I guess the question for Skillless now is whether he's going to be able to get a Colossus out. So we're going to see a scan get drops, tries to get the Observer. So oh, almost stays alive. And... <laughs> If Skillis can get two Colossus out, he's going to be in an incredible spot. Two Colossus against Bio without Medivacs is, uh, it's, it's really, really good. But there's always the worry right now. If, if Kelizer bombs across the map and Skillis can't slow him down enough, it's going to be a ton of Stim Bio with combat shields with plus one eventually and these multiple tanks against really just a bunch of Blink Stalkers. The first Colossus is only about halfway done. And it seems like that's going to happen, at least for the time being. Skillis has been trying to delay things as much as possible but that first colossus is not going to be ready in time for the Ooh. first round of pushes the observer will go oh, down wow. once again and yeah it's That's... two scans for it but the the fact now that skillis cannot track this army in real time makes it really hard oh well he actually used those adept shades to mm -hmm. spot the tank unseaging and does manage to get on top of that at a really nice moment forces a big stim gillis does eat a lot of siege tank shots right there but he is able to kill one of those tanks. Kelizer, having stimmed already, doesn't want to stick around. Skillis is spoiling for a fight, and he is going to try and chase this army down. We'll be able to find one of these siege tanks on the chase. Can he get the second one? Kelizer is going to siege up. Fortunately, he didn't have to stim, but keeping that siege tank alive is a good play. A uh, little mini ambush being set up from Kelizer, but Skillis is like, okay, well, I, I control the ramp. I don't see where you are exactly, but I... Oh, actually, oh, man. That was a really nice stalker movement. Uh, did catch the siege tank on siege. Unfortunately, wasn't able to jump on it. One thing I would like to see on the next stage from Skillis is start up that charge upgrade. He did delay it with uh, emphasis on building units here, but still hasn't started it up behind this and does already have quite a few gateways coming on down. Even getting that Templar archives... And even warping in Zealots, yeah, this is... This could be a little bit tragic for Skillis because he is in a pretty great position, up 13 workers with a much longer time mining his third and a good hold against a push. Missing out on such a crucial upgrade could be devastating. Yeah, I'm like, everything else that we're seeing is it, this is getting ready for a plus one charge lot Archon push, right? You, you've held on against the attack. You're going to go try to smash the Terran player's third base, but if there is no charge, your Zealots are just about... I'm not going to say totally useless, but they are 99% useless. Like they'll, they'll soak some tank shots, I guess, but they're not getting on top of the bio. Certainly not, especially as concussive shells are there. It's not really a thing. So, yeah, Skillis has got his fourth base on the way. We're seeing those High Templar get warped in. There's the warp prison. Yeah, he's gearing up for this attack, and he's just going to be missing, like, 30% of the power of the attack. I would... I mean, uh, Colossus are really good, but without charge... Uh, it might even be higher than 30%, and he is building a war prism. He is intending to go for a push. Of course, he's getting a fourth base, he's getting a dark shrine, uh, getting that plus two weapons, but there this was intended to be a kill maneuver, I think, mm -hmm. or at least have a strong potential to kill. 
but the lack of that charge upgrade is going to give Kelezer a very big chance. Kelezer has been pumping pure bio, uh, and it's it's really heavy on the marine numbers too, which actually does make those Colossus quite a bit more powerful. But it also means that the Archons would have been rather beneficial with no ghosts. So, uh, I mean, th this is... This is really unfortunate. Skillis still hasn't realized we're nine and a half minutes in and he still hasn't realized he's missing one of the most important upgrades in the mid game of this matchup. Yeah, I mean, I, I, there is like, again, you talk about these things because it's so Marine heavy, the Colossus are going to be really good. The Force Field gets a couple. The Colossus are going to be nice. The Archons are going to be nice. And if Kelizer decides to get aggressive into Skillis, that's also, that makes it a little bit easier for your, your Zealous to go and, and make contact. But you're right. I mean, this is just such a massive problem. I'm not saying Skillis is going to lose off this because, well, Ooh, he might, though. <laughs> I, he might, actually. You're right. I'm like, well, you know, his economy is still pretty good, but this is a committed push coming out of Kelizer, and it is a significant supply lead. The fact that what there is this? he starts it now, uh, 10 minutes into the game, there are going to be DTs getting into the third and the natural expansion, and that will put a lot of pressure. Kelizer might not realize charge isn't done. Will Skillis be able to buy time for basically the entire upgrade? We do have a bunch of damage coming in on the other side of the map. DT is going to warp in and be uh, aggressive. If he can get in on top of these tanks, clearing these tanks would be huge, but he's not able to do it right away. Good scan from Kelizer. Vikings. Oh, did they? Oh, wow. The Observer this time barely escapes. So many SCVs going down behind all this. Skillis, he just needs to hold. Yeah, Full stop. It and, and good news for Skillis as well. Yeah, forgetting that charge upgrade is a problem, but it's probably the fastest upgrade you're going to get in the matchup. Like you have, even losing the fourth base gives you some amount of times. The Colossus are here trying to get on top. The force fields are decent, but Skillis is just going to back out of the base. And, <laughs> and Kelizer sees at this point that, wait, these zealots are a lot slower than they should be. But because it's 42 dead SCVs, because uh, Skillis, uh, Kelizer is not mining out of his main or his natural, or his natural or his third base. Uh, this, somehow this DT in the main base is still here. Oh it's got God. plus two, by the way, so it's one-shotting the Marines, and now eventually is gonna get these DTs will fall. Skillis doesn't ever want to lose the fourth base, but this kind of, okay, charge is done right now, gets on top of things, and well, at this point, Kelizer lost his economy, Kelizer lost his, his army, and Kelizer has lost this game. Skillis, he's now got his life in his hands going into tomorrow. Th